Today we're going to be going over the only eight fragrances that you need to have in order to have the best collection that will have you set up for any and every possible season and situation and event that you could ever think of. This could not get any easier. Eight fragrances. I mean, that's not a ton. That's still more than most guys have realistically, but you guys watching this aren't like most guys who don't have anything or one or two, right? Chances are you're wanting to build up a, a decent collection, whether it be a sizable one or just enough to have some variety. And that's kind of what we're focusing on today because you don't need a hundred fragrances or hundreds or thousands to smell good. You just need a few that work for a lot of things. So we're going to break all of these down by season and certain situations and everything. And I'll talk about that as we go through, but we got eight. Okay. It's not going to be too overwhelming. All designers, except for this first one, but it's a designer price. It doesn't even count. And I mean, it's just, you're going to be set up for success. So the first one is Mancera Cosmic Pepper. This one is being selected as the all year around, do it all, any situation scent. I mean, it really, it does that. That's what this one is made for, at least in my opinion. When I smell this one, I don't think, ooh, a spring scent, ooh, a summer scent, ooh, a winter scent. It doesn't really have any, anything that pushes it in, in one direction for one particular season or another like some of these others do. So I kind of put this one in as just no matter what day it is, what time of the year, whatever, temperature, I mean, if you're struggling, trying to figure out what you want to wear, this one's going to work. Kind of smells like a mixture between Chanel Allure Home Sport, O Extreme, Allure Home Sport, Verse mixing with Lanoui de Lome because you get this kind of creamy aldehydic freshness, tonka bean powderiness, creamy orangey citrusy mixture from Chanel Allure Homme and O Extreme, right? And then you also get this kind of spicy, peppery lavender undertone from something like a Lanoui de Lome, a warmer, spicy uh, undertone. Combine two of those together, and that's kind of what you get here, of course, with some variances, but that kind of gets you in a general ballpark of what this one's going to remind you of. And so with a combination like that, uh, a date night scent versus you know a sporty style DNA that can be used for anything, you've got something that legitimately can be used for anything. Date nights, formal wear, casual wear, spring, summer, fall, winter, it does not matter. It's a niche scent, but it's a designer price. It's newer, but it's already coming down to $100 and below. So there's, there's no reason you can't get this. If you can afford a YSL or a Gucci or an Armani or whatever, you can more than afford a Mancera. This stuff is great. Let's dive into our dedicated winter scent up next. Okay, I understand that's out of season, so we'll start here and we'll work our way over to spring and summer. But this is going to be just winter time. You can pick it up and wear it, and it'll do pretty much anything in the winter for you that you could be dealing with. Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum, a small little 50 ml here, but you know, it still gets the job done and it smells phenomenal. I love Spice Bomb Extreme too, and that's a great choice, but that one is uh, expected and pretty common. So let's throw in a curveball, Spice Bomb Infrared Eau de Parfum. I think this one is much better than the original infrared. Not that there's anything wrong with it, because there's not, I really like it, but this one has kind of a, a, a sweet, sweet red pepper, chili pepper kind of note with a bunch of cinnamon and all that stuff. It's just a little bit more refined compared to the Eau de Toilette. I would spray this, but the atomizer is broke. It just shoots a very narrow stream. That wasn't enough to be able to smell it, but actually I do pick up on some of the, the pepper, some of the spiciness. I mean, that'll hit you. When nothing else fails, I mean, the, the spices in this will really turn heads and get attention. It makes it Really well suitable for cold freezing temperatures because this stuff will hold up. Now let's jump into our dedicated fall scent. We have Rokus Mustache Eau de Parfum. So I mean, when it comes down to hoodie weather, leaves falling, cool temperatures, given a nice little break after a hot, humid summer, nothing else I could rather reach for than the YSL Tuxedo DNA which is what this is. I mean, there's many other clones as well, and this one is a little slight deviation on Tuxedo. More focus on the vanilla, benzoin, and uh, pink pepper, whereas the other, Tuxedo, kind of has more of an ambergris, patchouli focus, all that stuff. They're still very similar. This one separates itself a tiny, tiny bit. But regardless, it's still, you can tell where they're pulling inspiration from. But to me, it just, they're, they're, 
there's a lot of fall fragrances out there, but by far, what smells the most like the season of autumn to me is YSL Tuxedo and things that smell similar to it. If you want a straight up clone, you could go for Alhambra the Tux, Fragrance World Suits, and uh, got one on the floor here, Tudor by, what is that? Eau de Parfum, maybe that's Alhambra. Alfnan, Tarathi Brown, so many, so, so many clones. So you can go that direction, but I really do like Mustache Eau de Parfum. It's got a special place in my heart. I think you're looking at around $50 for this. Very reasonable, good performer, great quality, amazing stuff for fall. It can do anything in the season of fall, dressed up, dressed down, whatever. Date nights, it works. Now let's jump into our dedicated summertime scent. So very suitable for right now. What's one that you could buy that's gonna work all summer long and, and just not ever let you down? To me, uh, a very personal bias of mine, but one that I still love, Rosasi Hawis. The Invictus Aqua DNA lives on because, you know, this is still being produced and they never stopped producing it. They never took it away and then brought it back and said, hey, you know, now we have Hawis 2018 and then take it away and then bring it back in 2024, right? They don't do that. They just keep this going. Now, every now and then, especially in the summer season, it might sell out on discounters. This is the prime time to be wearing this one and a lot of people don't pick things up beforehand, or maybe they run out and they need to buy another bottle, whatever it is, it will sell out. But, you know, it doesn't mean it's gone forever. It comes back at some point. And the going price for this one should be anywhere from $45 to $50. I've seen it for as low as like $42, maybe $40 when they're running certain sales, you know, certain discounters. Don't be paying $70, $80, $90 for this. That's unnecessary. 40 to $50 is a good range to be getting this one, and it's worth its weight in gold at that price point. It's a beast mode, plum, bergamot, apple, ambroxan, musk scent, you know, Invictus Aqua smelling. Everybody knows it. But I mean, as far as having a, a playful, easygoing, just fun smelling summer scent, this is one of the best out there. People absolutely love the smell of this. It's, it's incredible. Let's go with our dedicated spring scent up next. You know, normally I go for something that's kind of green, you know, because everything is starting to pop and green up again. This one's not green, but it still is fantastic for spring. Narcisa Rodriguez Blue Noir Eau de Parfum. It's got a lot of musk, cypress, woods, and really just more musk. It's a very musky scent. Most of these are. They focus on that woody, musky base. So it kind of has... Uh, a clean, uh, dusty, woody, and kind of uh, earthy smell to it as well, which I like. And that kind of somewhat ties it back to being a spring smelling scent. Coupled with the fact that it, it just combines fresh and sweet, which is beneficial in the season of spring when it might be cold in the morning and warm in the afternoon and then cold again in the evening. You have these ebbs and flows of the weather. This one, it kind of can just go with the flow. And you know, if it's a little bit cold out, a little bit chilly and gloomy, it has a bit of a sweetness to it, but when it starts to warm up, there are some some lighter notes that kind of come to life. So, you know, it just, it works really well. There are some spring fragrances that are just straight up green and fresh and, and kind of clean, and they don't have a lot of a sweet base to them where on those colder spring days, you just might not want to wear that one. This one kind of gives you a bit more flexibility through the season of spring where it could be, you know, 50 degrees, 45, or it could be, you know, 65, 70. There's just a lot of range you can get out of this one. Our dedicated date night scent. There's many that you could choose from. You could go with an Old Faithful, Dolce & Gabbana, The One, Eau de Parfum, and, and just so many other options. Now, this is a newer release, newer, but, you know, definitely well-established at this point that I think is great for a date night. Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum Reserve Privé. It's got chestnut, which is beautiful. It's got whiskey and iris as well. Everything about this is just top of the line. This is by far their best release, their best flanker. They did everything right. It's cool to see a designer brand that, you know, realistically, they're probably not listening to what we have to say, but it feels like it when they come out with something like this. Just more of a... Uh, you know, fragrance enthusiast appealing scent. Not that it's the most unique thing ever. 
When it comes to things like uh, the Gentleman Eau de Parfum Boise and the Eau de Toilette Intense, those are just more designer level. You know, not that this is all of a sudden niche or anything, but you get what I'm saying, right? There is a correlation and there's also a difference between this and the others. There's a correlation between the Eau de Parfum Boise, the Eau de Toilette Intense, and some other more popular designer fragrances out there. This one kind of stands out and it's fantastic for an evening out. It just, it works really well. Now we are going to go for our dedicated compliment beast. Now, make no mistake, everything I listed off here, they're all great compliment getters. And I talked about that on quite a few of these, right? They, I mean, they'll all work. I wanted to throw this in, though, as a bonus. Actually, there's one more bonus after this, but again, we have eight total. But this is just kind of like, you know, any time of the year, just if you want to play it safe, and all you care about is just getting compliments and smelling good no matter what time of year it is, where you're going. This is just a no-brainer people pleaser. Why Eau de Parfum Intense? It's just going to work, guys. It's got the sage, the uh, lavender, the geranium, the amberwood. No sweet apple, right? They take that away and they make it very, very much focused on the aromatics, which I love. It, it makes this one easier to wear. I think it might appeal to more people. It's just a really, really well done and smart release. It's yet another flanker that just, it, it took some complaints that other people had about the sweetness of some of those others and they removed it. Whether that was their idea or not to please other people or it was just what fell into the pipeline next, whatever it is, it's a worthwhile flanker. It's already on discounters. It's already $100. I mean, it's a great pickup. And last up for this one, we have our eighth fragrance. So what else could there be? You know, we have date night, spring, summer, fall, winter, compliment polar. But this is just going to be your unhinged beast mode bomb. So if you need something that's just going to be stronger than everybody else's cologne, if you're going out to a bar, a nightclub, a music festival, a party where there's going to be a lot of people, and with all those other things I listed off, typically there's a lot of people in a, in a dense crowd. There's a lot of other smells going on for better or for worse. And so you need to compete, right? You need something that's going to overcome all of that noise. This is going to do it. This is going to do it. Savage Elixir. I mean, this is going to be the beast mode scent that destroys them all. So no matter what it is, again, spring, summer, fall, winter, you just want beast mode. This is it. Now, obviously wearing this in the dead of summer at a music festival outside, it's going to be loud. It's going to be just overpowering. Keep that in mind, but I know that's going to be people's goal. It's going to work. All right, guys, there you have it. Eight fragrances that will just build the complete ultimate collection for you. I mean, you could do so many things with all of these and mix and match between seasons if you really wanted to, but this is a good guideline to get you started. I mean, these will just take you very far. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.